Nobody's Famous Podcast. All right, here we go. And we're three, two, one. All right, everybody, we are back on the Nobody's Famous Podcast. We are back with an amazing guest today. So glad to have him finally with us on the show. It's an absolute pleasure. Today, we will be interviewing the one and the only A Day with Abdul. What's up, buddy? Hello. Hello. How's it going? How's it going, Ali? How's it going, guys? Uh, it, the pleasure is all mine, obviously. The Nobody's Famous podcast, very famous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so exactly. I'm very happy to be here. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Abdurrahman, for being with us. Uh, the pleasure is ours, actually. And I just want to I wanna jump right in here, you know, and, and uh, start, start talking about what you do and who you are and 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 you know you've you've uh you are an uh, interesting person let's, let's put it this way you have become known um uh for documenting your travels in Abu Dhabi and and uh shining light on what are the things to do here and all that while profession you know juggling your professional life at the same time you know mm -hmm. we, I wanted to get you on the show I wanted to talk about all this me I'm someone who grew up in Abu Dhabi all my life You know, this is, um, I consider it my home. And, you know, a lot of the things that you're doing is shedding light on um, these types of things, how we can do different activities, the history and, and all the mm -hmm. Emirati culture as well. Um, so tell us what's just quickly before we jump into the deep, deep Inshallah. end, quickly, tell me. Who, who are you and how do you juggle these two these two, two sides worlds. of your lives yeah yeah okay so first obviously my name is uh, Abdurrahman uh, the name I deal with Abdul comes from my name um, and uh, you know my story with this concept with the channel etc was uh, coming from an innate interest and curiosity about my culture and my community and why is it not as highlighted as it's supposed to be. Um, even for me as a local, uh, growing up, I didn't really know as much as I should have known um, of how rich our history is and so on. And so, you know, the, the concept of the channel didn't just come like out of nowhere. Like a lot of years back, I kept thinking, you know, how, how can I learn more myself while educating others at the same time? So the effort started with, it's a, it was a birthday challenge. So last year's birthday, I was like, you know, let me do something different this time. And let's do a hundred day challenge, just whatever it is. And I picked up a camera and I started filming the uh, Eid. And that was the first video that I ever did. And that video basically highlighted the ce ce you know, celebration of Eid. And from there, my friends, who are mostly actually foreign. Uh, so I have my local friends, but my foreign friends are the ones I kind of connect with more. They, you know, wanted to explore the city with me. So they told me, oh, what is there? What, what, what is this about? Why do you guys kiss on the nose <laughs> or whatever? Um, and so that's where the inspiration came from. And, and there, from then I kept exploring different parts of Abu Dhabi and filming like, uh, you know, the stuff that we have here. <clears throat> yeah awesome so so in a way there was some pre-planning but not the full yeah. pre-planning it's not the, the exactly so so how does this fit in with you know the you know i think the curious you mentioned curiosity or innate curiosity how does this relate to your time in the states you you um you you told me that uh there was this was something that uh that is you know uh a significant part of your life how does that relate to your your you know i don't actually know what time you spent so if you can tell <laughs> us also how is that how's yeah, it relevant yeah. um okay how it's relevant it's because uh living in the states i was a foreigner myself so i kind of gained the perspective whether i liked it or not of an outsider and how it is for me to assimilate with the American culture, how hard it was actually, even though we're so familiar to, with the American culture, et cetera. Uh, you know, I can ask you a hundred things about the US and you'll be like, yeah, I know this, I watched this in the movie, blah, blah, blah. So we're familiar with the culture um, in diff through different means. Um, it was so difficult for me to break through and make American friends, for instance, et cetera. 
Um, and so, but, you know, eventually I broke through and I did make some friends. But coming back here after studying in the States for so long, I thought, you know, what do foreigners experience when they come here, you know? Uh, the UAE is one of the most international cities, or sorry, countries in the world, Dubai and Abu Dhabi specifically. And I grew up with mostly foreign teachers, you know, teachers or what we call um, uh, Ajanab or Arab. Um, and and I, I, I don't really know much about them or their culture. You know, it's very superficial, let's say. So yeah, that's how it connected. It was just kind of like, you know, gaining that perspective. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was more of like the you yeah. mitter, you know, you you felt the mirroring between the two. Uh, you you yourself felt okay. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm 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 a foreigner there. It's very different for me. And you came here and you kind of mirror this uh, way that you're doing things and try to maybe not put those foreigners in the same position that you you were in in a way. Um, and exactly. that's it's pretty exactly. cool it's pretty cool i like that you were bringing that um that side of it and and mm-hmm. and before i jump into this 100 day abu dhabi to, uh, tour yeah it's, it's a name for an event i love it um <laughs> you 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 sent me a photo okay where you were very different to to who you are right now and i was i was shocked like you sent me i was like send me something you know, that represents who you are and i was I, <laughs> and I was like, you made a very big change in your life for the better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Again, does that somehow relate to, you know, your current lifestyle? How, how let's say, quote unquote, more active that it is now. Uh, was there a moment in your life that caused you to make this change? And, and, and then we can go on to the WW tour. Sure, sure. Uh, do you want to share the picture, or is it? Uh, I, 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 I'll, it? I'll put it up. I'll put it up when. Okay, like in the, post <laughs> the video. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So now you will see the picture. Uh, maybe let me tell you them what what the picture is about. So, uh, what you see in front of you, I uh, I guess, is uh, Abdul myself as a seventeen year old. Um, that was in two thousand and nine. I had just moved wow. to the states. Um, and it, it, you know, not e- not even more than a week uh, or two, and it, it just started snowing, and that was the first time in my life that I saw snow. Um, and so, so you can imagine, you know, the happiness and the excitement. You're like, ah, what is this? And so I started like, you know, collecting the snow, and I held it with my bare hands, and then it <laughs> started burning. I'm like, what is happening? You know. <laughs> um, so. So I think I was just, you know, that that image in my mind and who I was back then, it was just such, um, which is understandable, but I was just such a naive um, kid. Like I was just so innocent. Like I was, um, you know, I didn't have, I didn't care what was the next thing coming up. It was just me and my classes. I just graduated high school and experiencing this new world of the U- US. Um, so you can also see from the picture that I was physically a bit different. Um, and that is actually something very, like, I, I wouldn't say unique to me, because uh, coming from the UAE culture and and the um, um, well, statistics statistically, the Emiratis are one of the most overweight nations in the world, and I was actually overweight at that um, at that stage. My uh, weight or obesity didn't. Oh, you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so I, it reached obviously even worse levels. I reached around up to around 120 kilograms. So that was oh, pretty intense. Um, and the reason I reached that level was because of, um, I would say a bit of um, lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, lack of uh, nutritional um, uh, knowledge, I would say. Yeah. Um, and it really bothered me and, and I, I really, I was hurt by it like for the longest time. Um, but since then, and for the two years after that, I was just thinking really deeply about this. I'm like, what's going on? What's wrong? You know, how can I break through, break out of this? And I found out that a lot of our habits, our daily habits were the um, reason I reached that level. You know what I mean? Um, so I just decided to take it upon, my, upon myself 
And at that stage, I had changed universities, et cetera. So I was, you know, it was kind of a fresh slate kind of uh, part of my life. And uh, I decided to just change habits one by one, not take it uh, as a, um, you, you know, one of those fad diets mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, that like, oh, let's do this in one month. Let's get over it. I, I, I didn't buy into them. I just decided let's look at the long run. And I did a plan for like two or three years, achieved it in four months. Wow. Um, so, so yeah, the, the shift from what I was to almost what I am today took me around four or five months. And uh, I never looked back after that. I think that's, yeah. uh, that's an amazing story, man, that, um, that really puts into perspective the, you know, your current lifestyle. And, uh, you know, I like to always ask people if there was a shift in their lives, like, was there a moment that made them, you know, you sat down with yourself and you made this awesome, like awesome, crazy shift and, and, uh, you know, prove to people that, you know, really that sometimes you are the only obstacle, you know, there's nothing else except yourself. You are the obstacle to, to achieving a goal that you would, you would like to have. So first of all, I thank you for sharing that story. Secondly, I think this really uh, shows um, how you took, up, uh, took it upon yourself for the next challenge, which is the, the Abu Dhabi tour, uh, the 100 day Abu Dhabi <laughs> tour. So straight out of the gate, you know, I want to ask you this, <laughs> this, this first question, okay, yeah, on, this, okay. on this topic, okay, what, what does it take to become a certified tour guide in Abu Dhabi? <laughs> what is what is the what is the qualifications do you have to attain knowledge or what, what do you have to gain like what is the you know because i think i think many people might be listening to this now and say oh i know a few things can i become a certified tour guide so so you know um yeah you gotta find uh, one of those uh, lamps with uh, that aladdin <laughs> has and you gotta rub it and then you gotta make a wish uh <laughs> no no um so what, what does it take uh, practice and studying? Where do you take it from the Department of Culture and Tourism, DCT? Awesome. So you go there and you apply to get a, the tourist license and uh, they do different um, cohorts or classes. And if you pass, you pass. That's, that's basically it. <laughs> awesome. I mean, you learn <laughs> you something new certified. every day. This is amazing. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, since we have that now understood, you, uh, okay. although, although you, yeah, we got that understood, but you in a way, so, so onto my next question, you in a way filled a gap where, for example, people might visit Abu Dhabi and are unsure what they, they would like to do. They don't know, uh, let's say yeah. where to go. And I think this is also, uh, one of maybe not the main reason, but this is one of the reasons why you decided to do, uh, let's say a hundred day tour. That's like, that's like a hundred things or a day full of things times a hundred and but but tell us what's their what's their main inspiration behind your your hundred day journey apart like you said you made the challenge but there is there is something behind this isn't definitely there? yeah uh i the tagline of my account usually used to be um Oh, you think Abu Dhabi is boring? Let me show you that you can do so many things that even 100 days is not enough for it. Mm. So, so that was basically the inspiration. A lot of people tell me, especially visitors, friends that visit from overseas or, you know, residents or my, my friends that are foreign that live here, they say, oh, there's, there's nothing to do here. Let me go to Dubai. Let's, you know, go to Dubai on the weekend. And that happened every weekend. I got tired of it. And so I told them, listen, um, Stop this like nonsense. Abu Dhabi doesn't have much to do, blah, blah, blah. Let me show you. It actually has a lot to do. Um, and I think it's partly, uh, I wouldn't call it the failure, but I guess people are, or the government maybe, maybe here, the local, whatever, they're reluctant to share all these, um, the activities that are happening because most of the people living here are residents. There are no, not as much tourists as Dubai. Um, but things are starting to change. We have the Department of uh, Col uh, Culture and Tourism. They are pushing a lot of these ideas now. And so uh, you might see a, a big difference in the coming years. So, Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. for, for me, uh, I'm very much an advocate of Abu Dhabi growing up here. And, and uh, I'd like to, you know, uh, like to say myself that I, I, I kind of like the, the calmness 
but then you can do a lot of outdoor activities. You can uh, do a lot of things with with people in a, in a more uh, let's say relaxed way. And, and you you know you can have Dubai or you can have another Emirate for for different types of you know opportunities or seeing different friends there and that kind of stuff. Um, but I think like to be okay, let's say to be certified and to be part of um, uh, this as, as being a certified tour guide, knowing your craft, knowing what, you know, how to explain to people the culture and everything. This, uh, you said it takes a lot of like studying. It takes a lot of like uh, insight. Is, is, is that also where you get information to create your Instagram posts, for example? Because I think it's awesome because it's a lot of information that you share and uh you're like you're very like i like it you're very blunt where you ask the questions by the way did you know that it's like this and and the sayings you know the the, the saying so like whether you know you create your post whether it's it's a historical cultural factual fictional like so you know where do you get this information from well obviously like i i know them already it's just that we don't share them you know as locals we don't really share because we don't know that whether you're interested or not okay. um so, so I think that's where the inspiration comes from. It's like, I feel that you might enjoy it. And if I can package it in a way where you're like intrigued by it and you're like, hmm, I wonder how they, you know, how, you know, what are the best mountains in, in the UAE or what are the tallest? Like, I, I just ask myself bizarre questions sometimes. I find myself in these like, um, in, in these uh, moments and I, and I pull out, you know, my notes on my phone and I just start typing like, oh, this question came into my mind. Let me just type it. So I have a big list of things that I want to talk about. And that's basically where, where the inspiration comes from. Okay, that's cool. Because yeah. uh, the way you present the information is, I think, what's, uh, what's interesting. Or it's, let's say, eye-catching. Because there's a lot of people might, um, let's say, would like to know the information. But maybe won't digest it by reading a book or... Uh, maybe going to a museum, you know, sometimes when it's, it's a bit more condensed, like kind of the way that you've, you've been doing, it's a bit more condensed and it has nice quips for, for people to kind of like check out very quickly. Um, sure. But the, the other side to it also is, uh, you know, a lot of us um, also grew up in Abu Dhabi. We have our own memories. We have our own, uh, uh, you know, perceptions or mis misconceptions of either the culture or, or living here. I mean, you know, throughout your journey, I think you've, you know, you're almost at the hundred days. Am I correct? That's true. Yeah. You're almost there. So, so let's say what, what was your reaction when, um, let's say you encountered maybe expats or, or foreigners, tourists um, in Abu Dhabi, for example, who have insight about certain things, you know, they maybe they've visited in the past and you didn't know about it. Uh, have you used this information or did this even happen at all? <laughs> um, that's a good question, actually. Um, I wonder if it did. I, I think it might have it might have happened when it comes to like restaurant recommendations uh, that I've not uh, heard of or whatever. Um, yeah, actually, one of the things that I remember is one of like one of these cafes that popped up in uh, in El Mina, for example. I never heard of them, and some of my foreign friends told me about them, or like the expats. So yeah, it does happen, you know. When you when you when you're not in the circle, you don't know that it, it's there. True. And what what about yeah. the what about the historical side? Like, for example, how Abu Dhabi was in, in the seventies. Let's say, do you have you ever encountered someone who? has shared like an interesting story about about that time period, how things were changing, yes. or did people realize things were changing or did it happen all of a sudden? These kinds of things. Mm. Actually, what's, what's, uh, what's even more fascinating to me was, well, first of all, obviously my parents or my family's perspective is, is you know, the most uh, alive to me in terms of images. Uh, but what's, what's so fascinating to me is meeting, I just met recently actually, a guy that his dad migrated to the UAE in the 60s. And he was one wow. of the early engineers that worked in, as a civil, civil engineer. And he's from either Jordan or Palestine. Um, and yeah, he's one of the early engineers. Imagine like back then, you've probably had like five engineers or something. You know? <laughs> the pool was so small. 
and his whole family migrated here to work on these like um, fun, fundamental projects, like uh, infrastructure projects uh, in both Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Sharjah, whatever. So, so meeting that guy was so fascinating. He got, he taught me so much about not only his perspective, but his dad's thinking, hey, I'm going to go to this desert to build a road and, and, uh, and how they didn't expect it to, to reach where it is today. It was just magical almost, you know? I think that's where a lot of the fascination comes from. You know, um, I remember when I was uh, uh, younger, we used to go, let's say, to the Hilton Hotel and they had the old pictures, you know, of the Hilton just standing by itself. And, the, the, you know, the beach line was so different. And I think this is where the fascination comes from, is that in that time where where that person was to build, let's say, a road, to then have the foresight that in, in years to come that, you know, this would be something so completely different. I mean, you know, that we're talking about Abu Dhabi, uh, let alone Dubai in the type of change that it, that it has seen. I think this is, it's amazing that we get to live in a, in a time where we could see how things were and how it is now, because, you know, a lot of the people back then to see the, 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 the kind of projection as to where yeah, things, yeah, yeah. things, you know, have expanded. And um, it really, there's also a humbling aspect to it. There's, there's a lot of uh, uh, nostalgic, I mean, you know, a nostalgic, nice feeling to it. So especially, you know, for our parents who, who, who came during the very early, early period. So, so I think it's it's 100%. pretty cool to have these these uh, these stories. Um, yeah. Well, w- let's go on to the misconceptions. Like, what are the common misconceptions? Let's say when you meet with tourists, what what are the misconceptions they have about Abu Dhabi? What's the funniest you've heard? You know. Um, oh, that's that's a very good question. I I wish I had uh, <laughs> thought of like things to share, but. It must be first the misconception regarding how um, how the um, how society functions. So in terms of like um, the gender imbalance, let's say, uh, they get some parts right, but the majority <laughs> are like inflated. I'm like, okay, relax. Okay, we, we're not like that. Um, how conservative the society is, which is true to a certain extent, but sometimes it was it's like. You know, they have a really skewed image. They're like, oh, the woman must walk behind the man. And I'm like, mm, well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a bit outdated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Um, and so, yeah, I would say these things. Obviously, they, some people di- don't expect that we have so many, like, fancy cars. So when they come and see all the, like, Ferraris, like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> they, they start, like, taking pictures next to them. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I think also uh, a lot of a lot of that is especially like you know I had I had traveled abroad and it, it's 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 difficult you know at the time when you tell you, you used to tell people um, I'm from here I live in Abu Dhabi and they're like where's that and all these things that has now obviously completely changed you know that the whole thing has changed from from you saying oh Dubai. Uh, people like oh i know dubai but uh, in now it's completely changed especially with 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 abu dhabi so i think you know uh, a lot of the efforts are now you know are showing showing yeah. through and and a lot of people are um uh, visiting and and seeing like okay you know if i want you know very um fun outdoor lifestyle you know this is this is where it is and you know apart from the summer you, you know you have the heat but still, it's very different from living in a place with blizzards and, um, you know, uh, typhoons and all these types of things. It's very, very different. You know, there's a lot of things you could do mm-hmm. with this type of weather. Um, and, well, if I have this question. If there is one thing that you could promote about the UAE or let's say Abu Dhabi, you know, uh, uh, what would that be? What's the m- most thing that stands out to you? Um I would say go for, for the most unique things. So, so if you come here and you, you have one thing to do, skip the city, skip the, um, you know, the, 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 the tourist attractions, go straight to the desert, 
hire a company, uh, but authentic company, uh, something that where they can show you just not just the food, but they can explain to you the culture. They can explain to you um, uh, about the camels, some of the history. They make the coffee in front of you. So go through the, the fundamental. And if you couldn't go to the desert, my my next option would be go, go to Qasr al-Hassan. I was just um, about to say this, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Qasr al-Hassan would be sufficient. Just go there, buy the 30 dirham ticket, and it's 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 honestly worth so much more. The 30 dirhams, from my experience, it's 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 definitely worth uh, way much more because you don't only get to experience the history, uh, all this building in Abu Dhabi, blah, 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 fantastic uh, museum. And finally, the um, artisanal experience or the artisan's house uh, where you can you can actually see them making the coffee live uh, and other things as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm lucky I live nearby so I can just walk across <laughs> and I've been to the new newly renovated and it, it's, you know, the... the 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 space how it's changed um is it's it's awesome like there's a certain serenity to it and it's 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 really nice and, uh, and i remember you know the events that that used to happen there the festival and it just really adds a lot to the uh to the culture to the vibe um a bonus question before we go to uh, i want to take you to a trivia round All which right, you, you're gonna you're gonna test this for the first time the trivia round but but before we get to the trivia round i have a i have a bonus question for you i i am someone who grew up in you know abu dhabi like i live in downtown you know like uh, markazia you know like uh, um near the old souk um you know that 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 uh, that area a lot of my childhood has been spent in these, you know, these um, neighborhoods around these streets. Could, you know, would you consider this also like for me, this is my childhood. Like this is how I remember Abu Dhabi in the 90s, you know, growing up. Mm. Um, the taxis, the old souk, tourist club, you know, these are yeah. these are the things that I, you know, I, I hold on to. Uh, when I go through the city and I remember them, do you have, do you think this is something that people can experience as well? I mean, not the memories, but would you, you know, um, I'm not sure if you've had the same, uh, the same, maybe. Not really, you've lived... actually. Okay, interesting. So how, how but, was but, your but... perspective to it? Because you've lived uh, outside I mean, the we... city, yeah? I actually lived right in the middle of the city, but I lived in the house, the, the Emirati neighborhoods. Uh, it's called the Zahab, which is in the right. Actually, if you see the map, it's right smack in the middle, uh, but very far from um, the tourist. Uh, 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 sorry, what do you call it? Tourist club area. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Tourist, club, tourist club area. Sorry. So right uh, away from it. Uh, but my childhood was not surrounded by buildings or whatever. Maybe we overlap with the taxis and going to the old market that burned down at some point uh, and to the Mina. But my childhood was literally in that neighborhood. It was mm. just a, uh, uh, a city block. And it, within that block, we had different houses. And we have my cousins there and my relatives, blah, blah, blah. And we have bikes. And we would cycle from one house to another. And it wasn't that my full childhood wasn't that um, city block, you know? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, yeah. that's, that's awesome. I think that's, you know, I think this is a testament to, to how, you know, you know, we, we experience the city in so many different ways. Um, and, you know, really a lot for me, it was, you know, that, that part and we were going to uh, Khalidiyah Palace to the beach and, you know, going to airport <laughs> road, you know, uh, barbecues in the parks. It was, you know, these, these things, like it really, it really uh, has, you know, like I remember even, you know, the Sheraton, you know, at some point it was, you know, if you go to the Sheraton, yeah. man, it was the thing, you know, it, it's You're just bawling. those, yeah, it's honestly, these are some of the memories that, um, you know, I grew up with and it really, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, as much as people feel like they, you know, they should always be exploring, uh, searching, part of me feels like I'm lucky that I still get to experience um, visions of my childhood, you know, and I get to be close to to such memories. You know, I think this is yeah. this is very important, which we probably, you know, people always say you should be exploring, you should go, which, which I love and I want to do that. But I think we're also lucky that, that we still get to be close to family, close to, you know, a place we call home, close to these visions, you know, the, the, this, 
these memories. Definitely, man. Definitely. 100% agree. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll go on to the trivia round. So this is, this is, uh, this is we're going to try okay. this it's completely new with you, Abdurrahman. It's completely new. <laughs> it's completely new. Really? Uh, we're going to, we can test it out. So if, if there was quick answers, you just have quick answers. So let's no, say yeah, let's you, <laughs> uh, and, and why, okay, so and why. So if there was a place, if you had to live somewhere, somewhere else, okay, not, not the UAE, where would it be? Mm. Uh, Stockholm, Sweden. Awesome. Yeah. And why? First thing that came to my mind. <laughs> um, it's just the vibe of Sweden. It's just um, the environment, the people. Uh, it's very calm. It's, it's, there's no stress. Um, yeah, these are the reasons. The history as well, you know, all of that. Awesome. The food. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. I think they have amazing food, especially since I'm trying to eat uh, less meat and stuff. The culture there is so accepting accepting of vegan or vegan people you know so that's literally the best <laughs> awesome okay question number two what do you look for in a country like when you are let's say when you advise someone on like they mm. need to visit this country what do you look for um uh, it will be it'll have to be nature slash culture this is what i I'm not into like going to, for example, Paris and going to the Eiffel Tower. Okay, maybe there's some culture there, but I, I would rather go to the middle of France and go to one of the smallest cities. Um, one of the cities actually I lived in is called Vichy, France, yeah. which is right in the middle of France. You, you've heard of it. So it was actually the capital of uh, of uh, Nazi France. And I'm like, what? So I, I that was just amazing. I learned so much. But anyway. So not landmarks. Okay. Which is just, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. And uh, question number three, what makes a country feel like home to you? Um, <laughs> yeah, these, bro, these are not trivia questions. <laughs> um, uh, if I connect with it, is that a good answer? If oh, yeah? I could connect with it, like, um, uh, for example, I'm not American, but if I go back to the States, I swear to you, I feel like I'm going back home. I feel like, you know, this is just, it feels so natural. Everything works exactly how I'm used to, etc. Yeah, I think that's a great answer. I think your eyes lit up when you say that. So it's a great answer. <laughs> it's a great answer. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the last, last trivia question. Well, it's a bit of a long one, but, it, you know, we'll... we'll Anyway, this is a test, right? So if Love you, if, if we lived anywhere, like as, as people, we lived anywhere, would you think we would also complain that we haven't, we don't have anything to do? Or is it just because we, as people lack, you know, maybe um, uh, when we live somewhere, we lack the planning attitude, you know, like the, the, the oh, I want to go see this, the curiosity, you know, we lack this. Yeah. We definitely we get uh, we get uh, lazy to explore our surroundings and i would say i was uh, i am to blame of that as well of doing that um so yeah I, I, I would say people will still complain because well they wouldn't complain they will just say hey i'll do it at some point like i'm gonna learn about this later you know it's not really that exciting to me it's it's next door and you know yeah, so, I, th yeah. I think um, I'm also a victim, you know, uh, uh, a culprit of this uh, this thing because for me, um, I would be here and I'll say oh, I'll do it later or I have time. You think you have time, but you don't have time. Uh, it's it's so. kind of the kind of the thing. Um, and uh, so, so we're done with the trivia. We're done with the trivia. Round. I hope, I hope it wasn't All that right, bad. I passed. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Um, but uh, Abdurrahman, I wanna, you know, you have been um, been supporting us on the show for a while now, and and obviously, thank you so much for that. And and again, reiterating, thank you for coming on. Um, and. I have a few questions about the show and, and you know, your, sure. uh, your, uh, how you can relate to it. So you're on a show that's called Nobody's Famous. And really what you, you know, what you do with your 100 day tour is you're, you're sharing knowledge to people. You're sharing um, information about, about Abu Dhabi, information about uh, the culture, things to do, where to go, um, uh, you know, uh, like I said, you know, breaking myths, misconceptions, all that kind of stuff. You have the spotlight to do that 
which in a way is making you quote unquote famous. And um, so, so could you say that you, you having the ability or like, you know, the, the ability to share this knowledge to many people is fame? You know, are you out there sharing knowledge about the UAE in a platform with, you know, a few thousand followers? Doesn't that, doesn't that make you famous? Um, I mean, honestly, I guess I, the thing is with that, I, it will be, the definition will be up to the people. I, I honestly was never into this for, for people to follow my account or for people to, to, to make me famous. I, I don't care about that, actually. Um, I care about sharing good quality knowledge for, for people that want to learn. Uh, and I don't push it on anyone. If you want to, you know, if you want to, you know, look at what I have to say, then you're welcome to, to, to look at it, share it, et cetera. And I found that not a lot of people are doing it anyway. Um, so yeah, I guess it's up to the people to call me famous or whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, listen, this is a good answer. Very diplomatic. I think, you know, it's very, very, very good and diplomatic answer. Um, I just think yeah. that, um, you know, again, there's, um, you know, a misconception about the concept of fame and, and, uh, yeah. and it's interesting that, um, you can, you know, uh, people can find, you know, people can find value in what you do. And it doesn't mean that if, um, you know, people are following you because they find value that you become, uh, you know, you, you should be branded as someone who is, you know, famous or whatever in that kind of context. So, yeah. Uh, it's a very good diplomatic answer <laughs> that, that that you gave, um, and and uh, and through your uh, you know 100 day tour, you're yeah. sharing and again you're sharing insight Abu Dhabi. Do you think you are playing a part in expanding again expanding Abu Dhabi's uh, fame, or again is it is it purely a um, is it purely a, uh, a knowledge uh, sharing event that you're doing? Definitely, yeah. I think both, both. Uh, I am, I am. That my goal was actually to highlight Abu Dhabi as a beautiful, you know, colorful city. Um, but at the same time, the information is important to to highlight. So, yeah, I think it's both. Uh, I think one one last thing is my. Uh, I think it's also my my willingness not to care about what people think in a way um, that is kind of pushing me because I, I heard a lot. And even as I grew up here, uh, a lot of my peers and even family members, they really care what others think. And that's something I think I, I learned a while ago that really others' opinions don't matter at all. Uh, within a certain reasonable margin, you know, push yourself and, um, even when I started my videos, I was, uh, I felt I was so awkward. I was not really knowing what to do. I was, I just felt so uncomfortable doing it. And I just thought, you know what, just do it. You know, who cares if by if within another month you decided to close it down, do it, you know? <laughs> so, so I think it's this constant willingness to push myself and to expand my knowledge personally. I think this is where it comes from, but anyway, yeah. Yeah. And is there, are there any other challenges that you faced while, you know, obviously the, the, the length of the, the program that you're trying to do is a challenge in and of itself, but did you face yeah. any other types of challenges? Um, definitely. I think when, when it comes to content, not really, because I, I still have so many things to share. Um, but uh, I think when it comes to production, I, I really lack on some aspects. So that's something for me to improve. Um, so these are only technical challenges, I would call them. But when it comes to ideas, motivation, it's still there. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing, man. I think, and, and it really goes back to, you know, we we I've said it before, and and for us, like it really relates a lot um, to us on the show as well. We faced, you know, mm -hmm. a, a lot of. Uh, technical uh, you know any type of challenge you can think of we've, we've faced it and i think it's very important to um to show or to to go keep pushing with you know if you manage to not release something or create content it's okay you know as long as you still have the drive and you you make the chance to do that at another point i think a lot of people take in everything at once and think they have to release it at once 
which is not the case and try to solve all the problems at once and it, it, it's it becomes overwhelming and then you just you just stop so um, yes. definitely uh, baby steps um, I have one uh, question for you Abdurrahman and please that, go ahead uh, final question and that question is do you have a question for me <laughs> Uh, I thought it will come to this at some point, actually. Awesome. So you um, expected it. <laughs> I, I kind of expected it. I kind of expected it. Um, so one of my first questions was, how was my beard game? Because I know you, you, oh my uh, God. <laughs> you level that with the other ones. So that one I wanted to. <laughs> hey, man, listen, your, your beard game is, you know, this pretty strong. Really? You it's know, not, it's, it's uh, maybe not as heavy as the others you know but but easily you can you can you can do that you know you don't have okay you don't have the problem that maybe some people might have which is a, a gap somewhere or you know it's scruff <laughs> yeah. or something you you just hey man you just sit you do nothing and you'll have a very good beard you just sit do nothing you know just let it <laughs> let it happen man that's how easy it is that's how you got um, yeah, I'll give it a couple of months. I'll give it a couple of months. Yeah, yeah. Wow, what a, what a, what an amazing question. Awesome. <laughs> oh, my God. Awesome. But I think, uh, I think though, honestly, honestly, I have other questions as well. Shoot, let's um, do um, So I, I, I know the podcast, and uh, it's, it's an amazing project. And I want to know what does Ali think about the next um like like idea of uh, nobody's famous like where is it going where is it gonna push to do you do you have a certain plan in in, in mind or is it just uh, you know as you go no i think i love this question i think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm great i'm glad that you you know brought up this great question um there is a plan you know there's always uh, something that is thinking in my mind there's always something new uh happening uh obviously you know uh, you are part of the new season. You're part of the new brand. So, so this plan has unfolded, and everything has nice. you know come to light. And there's like a full refresh, and uh, you know, uh, hammering home the original mes message that we have, but still you know maintaining you know like the cool vibe and and really just getting on more and more people that you know uh, really need to be heard you know on the show mm -hmm. so definitely we will continue with this uh, this layer you know but uh, i want to say um, and this is more of like a content side to it another another layer to to this is we're going to be doing reunion shows so i'm um, you know i want to bring back some of the old guests but not by themselves i want to bring them with either you know their friends who have been on the show and have like mm -hmm. a full on, you know, uh, improvised show or even get them on with people that are, you know, they, they've never had a show with and just see how that, that happens. Nice. So that's, that's more on the content side. So that's like something completely different, but, um, you know, uh, like what you do, um, you're creating a lifestyle, uh, you're, you're sharing that kind of message. We also kind of on the same path, you know, we want to, um, share that message of, of, you know, nobody's famous, that kind of concept and let everyone have the spotlight. You know, a lot of, a lot of my plans, obviously because of the, the, the pandemic, I couldn't do uh, live shows, but I couldn't also be in front of people and speak to them and uh, mm -hmm. do certain um, uh, ways of the show that I would like to do. Like I have a plan for doing like a guest roulette type show, you know, I'll, I'll interview, <laughs> I'll get, uh, you know, I'll, I'll interview people every five minutes i have a new guest you know that was kind of some of my ideas and nice nice yeah just all these types of things that come into into my head and you know another sneak peek which which i mentioned um a lot also, of them a lot of them let's do yeah, it yeah <laughs> still you know another thing is you know there's merchandise coming soon so uh, nice. a lot of that is well probably you know it's probably by the time this show airs it's already out hopefully so really good so yeah so yeah. all of that kind of different stuff but but again this is you know maybe not the big answer you were looking for but uh right now focusing on just keep keep the content going and always getting, you know, high quality, um, you know, giving the high quality that we, that we do, but at the same time getting, you know, the best guests that we yeah. can get and, uh, and really, you know, just uh, expanding all the type of content that we can give to people really. 
Love it, man. So when so when you, you when you'll be the um, the Joe Rogan of the UAE, all right. <laughs> when you'll reach that stage, are you gonna bring on Elon Musk? And then make him smoke midwah, or how's he gonna? <laughs> you know, um, it, this is this is pretty funny. I think I've I've been some somebody told me this before. Like, oh, are you gonna be like the Joe Rogan of of the Middle East or something <laughs> like that? And I, you know, in my mind, I don't think I responded directly, but in my mind is, um, you know, we don't we I don't want to like, you know, be uh, be known as the let's say the joe rogan of something or the muhammad ali of okay something, or the Manny pacquiao or something you know um <laughs> we we want to always be you i think you should always strive to be unique your own voice um strive okay. to do things differently and you know I, I relate to this with you as a content creator what you're doing is very unique as well because um you are you are providing information in a very digestible way but you're taking on you fill the gap you know that people um maybe have missing you know they they you, you came in you filled it and what you're doing may may be similar to let's say you know a few other people but the way you convey your message is very different and i think it's very important you know this is what i think people should focus on they really should strive to find you know carve out their own voice mm -hmm. their own uh, own part and if you get compared you know obviously that's it's flattering uh, it would be great <laughs> to be compared definitely and it's definitely yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a positive side to it. But, you know, I would always try to strive to be, you know, uh, we can always try to, you know, be unique. And and I think personally what we're doing is um, very unique to to get people on a platform to speak about their lives. Uh, 100%. You know, you don't have to be, yeah. you don't have to be famous. You don't have to be a celebrity. And, and, and again, like that notion is, it's very evident in our world today. It's a very negative black cloud that, you know, um, people hang over their heads and they're like, who's going to listen to me? I'm no one. Well, no, that's not the case. And, you know, you have a voice too. And uh, that's, that's what kind of what the show is about. Love it, bro. Love it. Love it. Lovely message. Lovely show. Honestly, a big fan, as you know. Uh, so looking forward for the merch and uh, the beautiful <laughs> graphics that you have. Hopefully, Thank I you. mean, you know, the, the colors are the LA um, Lakers colors. I, I know. You know uh, the, some people, the, some people that. Uh, <laughs> mentioned that, but we do, you know, obviously we have like different colors that we bring in and stuff. So yeah, it's it's a nice, nice. mix, but it's a nice mix. Um, definitely, definitely. Abdurrahman, I want to say, uh, you know, first of all, thanks to the awesome questions, by the way, amazing questions um, <laughs> to me. And I want to say once again, uh, thanks for being on the show. Do you have any any last words before I do our outro? That's it. That's it, man. Go for it. Thank you so much for, for your time. Yeah. The pleasure is all mine, man. So, guys, this has been the Nobody's Famous Podcast. We have been live with the one and the only A Day with Abdul. Please check him out on YouTube. You know, there's a lot of content on there you know he's still going through the days make sure you check them out check out his instagram for um all things emirati culture things you can do in abu dhabi his lifestyle yes. the person who he is just amazing check it out at a day Thank with you. abdul you know just check that out um make sure you you know um uh, check us out on spotify soundcloud youtube instagram for everything nobody's famous and this has been the Nobody's Famous Podcast, signing off.